Hello wonderful humans and welcome back to another one of my videos. Today I'm going to be talking about five books and I've decided to dedicate this video <laughs> to Father's Day because that's what today is in Australia. So here in this video are five books that I have permanently borrowed from my dad. The first book is uh, the first in a trilogy. Um, it's actually not a trilogy anymore, but it was a trilogy when I was a kid, when Dad was a kid. Um, and the author has since gone on to add more books to the series, which I haven't read. So I'm looking forward to going back and doing a reread of these at some point and then going further. So I have here by Ursula Le Guin, um, The Wizard or A Wizard of Earthsea, which I love simply summed up a tale of wizards dragons and terrifying shadows in which the young wizard Sparrowhawk strives to destroy the evil shadow beast he has set loose on the world. Um, I, it's been so long since I've read these but I'm looking forward to reading again and um, dad sorry you're never getting this one back it's mine now go buy your own copy. The second book that I have permanently borrowed from my dad and he's never getting it back from me is um, a book from the 60s. I think I would be very, very surprised to learn that a lot of, if a lot of fantasy writers that I've loved their books hadn't read this. I feel like this book has been quite influential, or this, The Chronicles, um, The Chronicles of Pride and it's The Book of Three by Lloyd Alexander. And I'd be very surprised if it hasn't influenced a lot of modern authors in one way or another. Um, particularly, um, maybe it, he's not a modern author, but particularly someone like Robert Jordan, um, I feel has taken some of the tropes or the ideas and themes and characters even from this book and made them, um, made them new in the Wheel of Time series. Um, it's about Taryn um, and Taryn wants to be a hero. He's a farm boy though. Um, particularly he looks after Henwyn the pig who turns out to be an oracle pig. Um, because uh, don't you just wish that all pigs were oracle pigs? That would be so cool. Um, you may know some of the story from the Disney movie, The Black Cauldron, um, the animated movie, which was a great movie in its own right, but it combined The Black Cauldron, which is the second book, um, and the story in this. So it took both stories and mashed them together. It's got um, the farm boy, it's got the princess, it's got the bard, um, it's got dwarves and, and battles and cauldron born and it's just really wonderful. I think it's one of those books that is really easy to read so it doesn't take long. I think this book has so many themes and characters and ideas in it that have influenced um, the genre. It's taken like it it's taken things um, in one direction and then new like new books new authors have come along and taken the ideas and run with them more i just think it's influential i think it's one of those books that if you haven't read it and you're a fantasy fan then you really should read it so go check it out but sorry dad you're not getting this one back so the third book that i have permanently borrowed from my dad um is uh, look i I, t I have included a lot of this um, this author's books in my videos. He is incredible. Um, and this is the book that I think I can say safely, the actual physical book that has probably influenced my love of reading more than almost any other book that I've, I've ever read. Um, and that is The Hobbit by Tolkien. Um, this book, it's well loved. It's, it's kind of beginning to fall apart. It's a school edition of the book, so I do wonder, I should ask Dad when he read it um, at some point. But at the back, it's got some study ideas. For example, for chapter 9, 10 and 11, it says, Make a strip cartoon of the events in chapter 9 and add some of the things you think the dwarves might have said as they were escaping. Um, which could go quite wrong, actually, as they're in the barrels. If you know The Hobbit, is as they're in the barrels and they're getting out. That's asking for trouble, isn't it? Can you imagine if you ask kids to do that now? What kind of words that they would um, have the dwarves say? But I just think it's this is the book. Um, I, unless I'm really wrong, and, and Dad, feel free to correct me. But this is the book that Dad read from the actual physical copy when we were kids. Um, 
and I still love it and I love the artwork on the cover and I just I love it and he's never getting this one back which I kind of feel a little bit bad about this one more than any of the others but too bad it's mine now this next book was probably the last of the books that I borrowed from dad um, and since just haven't returned I was in my first year of university studying a history unit on uh, called myths legends and history and as part of that we were looking at King Arthur so I went to I went home um, one weekend and I grabbed books about King Arthur and this was pretty much the only one that I think that had at the time um, and I grabbed it and I don't think I even used it <laughs> But I had an excuse to take it and I always wanted to read it. I don't even know. I think I have read this. Yes, I did read it. So it's not like it's just been sitting there. I did read it. It's just been a very long time. And I think I'm really overdue for a reread. Re um, but it's called The Acts of King Arthur and His Noble Knights by John Steinbeck. Um, and this is probably the book that Dad remembers the most that I've pinched, I think. Because honestly, any time he comes to my house um, and he's looking at my books, because he does that, um, this is the one he always says, that's mine. Um, but it's not anymore. I personally think that if I have had this book for 13 years, that it's now mine. These books I've probably had on my bookshelf for 20 plus years. So they're definitely mine. Um, but this one... Um, I think this is a really, really cool cool book from what I remember. I'm looking forward to, as I said, rereading it. Because um, I think John Steinbeck is a really great author. I've read a few of his books, not many, but a few, and I've enjoyed every single one of them. Um, and I like that it sort of, it draws on different sources and it, it's definitely written as a novel, so it's not a dry history book in the slightest. And um, oh well, if you can call King Arthur history, you can actually. <laughs> I studied it, um, but some of this kind of stuff is definitely drawing on more of the um, the Thomas Mallory stuff. It says that so on the cover, <laughs> um, and and less of the actual historical accurate stuff. But definitely, um, I would recommend if you can get your hands on a copy of this one to give it a go because it is a really good book. Um, and and I do feel a little bit bad about this one too because dad does remember that I have it. If he ever said, I'm going to take this, I would stop him and or he could take it and borrow it from me and I would take it back after a, a month. Um, so it is mine now. Sorry, dad. And the last book um, of my five books that I've permanently borrowed from dad is a little bit trickier to show on screen, um, but it might be my favourite book, especially as a kid or like this was... This was so much fun to look at. It's not a book that you sit down and read um, and some of the pages are definitely more looked at than others. But this is uh, by J.B. Hopost, an atlas of fantasy. And it is literally a book of fantasy maps. So I, I love fantasy maps, absolutely adore them. Um, you've got places like Mouseland. Um, I don't know where Mouseland, I haven't read that. Um, it's, it is literally falling apart. Um, so that's one of the reasons Dad will never get it back. But it was already kind of falling apart when I got it. But it says how well loved this book is. Um, it is definitely one. I'm trying to find a good map to show you. Oh, of course it's got a bit of... I'm just going to show you the page. It's got a little bit of Middle Earth there. Um, and on the other side... And oh, even more, there's more, more Middle Earth and more. I'd actually love, really love to have another copy of this and pull them out and frame them. Um, it has all of the Tolkien maps. Oh, and there's more. There. There's all of the Tolkien maps. It even has the map of Prydain from the Book of Three. Um, that one's a little bit more difficult to see. Um, and more maps from Pridane. It's awesome. I love this book. I wish it was in slightly better condition, but it's a really, really amazing book. And this one, I, I, I hide, because I feel that of all of them, this is the one. 
No, it's not hidden. It just lives on a different part of my bookshelf to all the other ones. And it's not a bookshelf that's easy for Dad to explore. Um, but now, because I'm putting all this in the video, I might have to hide these books. Um, that's okay. I can do that. That is the Atlas of Fantasy. Um, it's just full of incredible maps. I spent a lot of time with, I couldn't find it just then, um, but the Land of Oz is here. Um, that was probably one of those other books. Actually, I've got copies of Dad's books of those as well. Look, these are just five books that I've permanently borrowed from Dad. When I stop and thinking, think about it, I probably have a lot more, but these are five of my favorites. They're all fantastic books. I'd recommend any of them if you haven't read them, but if you have read them, um, tell me how amazing they are. And do you think, <laughs> do you think I should give these books back to my dad? Um, I think not. I think that they're now mine. I've, I, as I said, I've had them all in my possess possession for somewhere between 10 and 20 years. So therefore I feel that they now are mine, but technically they're still dad's books. Um, let me know, should I give them back or not? Anyway, happy Father's Day, dad. And um, that, that is all for today.